Welcome, Family Heads, to the first 2024 edition of Family Meeting. My name is Matt Glass. And I'm AJ Tanari. And this is Family Meeting, the little discussion segment of our podcast here on the Family Album. That's right, Matt. It sure is. Wow, AJ, it's already the end of January. Can you believe it? I know. It's kind of crazy, man. It's as, as we've mentioned previously, it's almost been a full year since the podcast has been a thing. It's wild. I didn't yeah. think I really didn't think we'd make it here. Nah. To be quite honest with you. I, as also we mentioned, we were in a bit of uh, development hell. We couldn't get the the rights to Tom. That was a, that was a, a big a big get from Paramount. His t- his parents didn't want us hanging around him. I mean, but, but, but why would they want to hang around him? Is 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 the big thing. I feel like it was kind of a, a blessing. We took them off, <laughs> took them off their hands. <laughs> we're like his two lovely uncles, you know. Just, <laughs> I'll be Uncle One. And I'll be Uncle Fungus. <laughs> it's great. I I don't think they ever actually established who. Like either of them were no, not in the lore. It's okay. Uh, I like to imagine who I think is Uncle One and who I also think is Uncle Fungus. It's also interpretation. That's what makes it so good. But AJ, we're not talking about um, uh, random internet videos. No, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're talking about our favorite albums of 2023. Since uh, you know 2023 has already come to a close, and it was almost the last week of January, we decided to kind of go through this retrospective of all the albums we really liked that came out this year. Yeah, and man, a lot of really good shit. Yeah, came man. Out this year, I think. Fantastic albums. We reviewed a couple on the show already in both Family Vacation and Family Meeting or Family Album Base. Sorry, I'm very exhausted today. Season one. <laughs> Season one. AJ just got back from a uh, little bit of a tour. Yes, I was on a weekend tour with a friend of the show, Ben Mascholi, his band Obsolescence. I was doing other videography work. Uh, uh, ben, my ass holy for ben, those sorry. who. For those who don't know him by his official name, yes, the, the deep cut fans will know him as my ass holy. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, it was it was, it was a lot of fun. But uh, I'm just very tired because I literally just got back today. But um, I'm excited to talk about some of these albums, man. So do you just want to hop right in? Absolutely. Uh, I think you're gonna be quite surprised by some of the like rankings from some of the albums on my list, mm-hmm. and then also like some of the albums that are on my list in general. I, I'm interested to hear what you got. I, I know some of them are going to be on there because we covered some on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also, I'm curious, how many albums have you listened to total this year or in 2023? Uh, like in total? Well, for like like new releases of 2023. Let's see. I think surprising because I was actually looking through it like uh, over the last few days just yeah. to like see what albums I actually discovered were from the past year. Mm-hmm. And uh, I almost got up to like. I think it was like 22. Tight, tight. Yeah. Uh, I went very overboard this year. Um, I believe 85. Wow. Was, was my... Look was, at you. I know. I was, I was trying to be on top of it because I'm usually really bad at listening to uh, so like modern music. So uh, I, I tried to really get into it. And I, I, I liked a lot of stuff. Hated a couple things. You loved like Avenged Sevenfold, right? Oh, life is but a dream. Uh, even though that's in like kind of like my bottom 10, I still don't think it's like as bad as the shit that's like very, very low on that list. I've kind of come around to it as kind of like a, a shit post album. That's fair. That's honestly very fair. Yeah. <laughs> um, but why don't we just get on, get, get on. Sounds good, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> Take her away. Get her done. Um, okay. So if we're going to both start at number 10 and go level by level. Mm-hmm. I'll go first. Number 10 for me is Arlo Parks' My Soft Machine. I don't think I've heard of that one. It's not, it wasn't v- very much publicized. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like really, really palatable, just like indie, like, like folk, not, not folk. It's more like, uh, I'd say like indie pop. Okay. Just alternative indie. Gotcha. It's really, really low key. Very nice. It's like, it's like a uh, sad nighttime music, ah. I'd say, <laughs> which are like my two sad core. <laughs> <laughs> I breathe sad core. Very nice. But it's cool. It has a lot of like lamenting lyrics about just like situationships and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And I, I really vibed with it. Very cool. I mostly listened to it in passing, but it was cool. I, I enjoy the instrumentation and her voice is very good. Nice. I want to come out. It came out October 6, 2023. Very cool. So, so the back half of the year. Yeah. But I feel like it's when like a lot of like the really good shit came out. Mm-hmm. Um, so for my number 10 is The Loveliest Time by Carly Rae Jepsen. Mm. After not making my top 10 last year, she finally did it. She actually knocked the top 10 spot that was there for like almost like the entire year down a couple of pegs because I realized I didn't, really like that, I didn't really like that album as much as Carly Rae Jepsen's project. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of fun, man. It's a really good pop album. 
some awesome like synth arrangements that really surprisingly remind me of the Persona games, mm. which is really fucking cool. That's tight as fuck. She does a lot of really cool genre bendy stuff, and each track has like this really cool, unique energy. They're all pretty much about like relationships, but they sound so different that it could it it sounds like each one has their own unique identity. Uh, some track highlights for me go to Shy Boy, Kamikaze, Psychedelic Switch, and After Last Night. And also her voice is just impeccable. I, I love her music. I'm very glad I got on the, the Carly Rae Jepsen train. Even her old stuff, her voice is just in tip-top shape. Call me maybe. Yeah, I mean, hey. Listen to our very first family meeting. <laughs> Shit, you're right. We yeah. have talked about her this season already. Mm -hmm. In another family meeting, yeah. Exactly. Wow. The family but meeting queen. <laughs> I can't imagine um, a better artist to be on your list, AJ. Oh, thanks, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she's honored. Because <laughs> she's totally listening. Yeah. yeah, so every celebrity, like we're friends with all the celebrities. Every celebrity yeah. we're mentioning here, actually, in the next uh, ten, <laughs> nine <laughs> left spots. Tiers. Yeah, they all love us. Like, yeah. we, we've bumped shoulders with all the greats. Exactly, exactly. And Tom. And Tom, yeah. Uh, shall we keep going to number nine? Sounds good. Uh, this one was sort of a later addition to my list. But uh, it's something I've honestly come to really, really appreciate over the last, I'd say, like, maybe a few weeks. Okay. It is Voir Dyer by The Alchemist and Earl Sweatshirt. Okay. Ah, fuck. I think I... Yes, I have heard this album. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I was already quite a fan of The Alchemist. Yeah. Because uh, my girlfriend's brother, shout out to Jack. He's pretty tight. What's up, uh, Jack? <laughs> <laughs> um, he told me about the alchemist and since then i've been listening to all of his instrumentals and stuff like yeah, that man and i've just been really getting into abstract hip-hop just as a whole yeah and i think you're gonna see a little bit of that like on the list just just a little bit mm. but um yeah no this this is a really really neat collab especially since earl sweatshirt has a very interesting i think like um type of lyricism and yeah, flow very compared to other rappers that i've been listening to mm -hmm. so yeah voir dire is definitely a nice surprise it came out hmm AJ, we seem to have run into an issue. What's that, Matt? I think I wrote down uh, the same date for... I said I think I wrote down the date for Voir Dyer for My Soft Machine. Oh, I see. Matt, you silly guy. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, folks. Uh, correction. My Soft Machine was May 26, 2023. Mm -hmm. Hooray. <laughs> <laughs> but we uh, did it. Voir Dyer came out October 6th. That's over six. Uh, yeah, I remember listening to this project and I, I quite enjoyed it. Um, I haven't really listened to a lot of Earl Sweatshirt. He has one album I know that's like really popular in like the hip hop scene. Uh, I think it's just called like some rap songs or something. I think that's the title. I, I could be making that up. I got to get into him more as I'm kind of getting more into rap and like sort of trying to leave like rock as my yeah. main like genre. Mm hmm. He's one person where I, I really got to listen to more stuff. Yeah, but I agree. He has a very like unique personality that I think made the album a very interesting listen. And I'm glad to listen to it. For me, for number nine, I also have a hip hop album. I believe I, you're, you're, this might be on your list too. This is a Beloved Paradise Jazz by McKinley Dixon. You know, surprisingly, because it was so late in the game, it's not. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Don't mean to spoil, ladies and gentlemen. But well, uh, I, I, that's, that's a wrong guess on me. It's okay. We'll add it to the tally. Nah, um, I do love that album, but I don't think I got as much enjoyment out of it uh, than, uh, like, as much as other albums gotcha. that are in that genre and, like, not in that genre. Um, but I, I quite enjoyed this one. I feel like it's it's a very short album. Yeah. But, like, it uses utilizes all of its time, like, very wisely. It's, like, just under 30 minutes, and, like, each track is so tight, so compact, with beautiful horn and string arrangements, with just some like really introspective lyricism about just kind of like the highs and lows of life. Um, also, this came out June 2nd, 2023, and it was it was sitting pretty in the top 10 like <clears throat> since my first listen. It kind of fluctuated spots a little bit, but I still always go back to it because I very much enjoyed it. I very much appreciate it, honestly. Like, Definitely. Tyler Forever and then, like, yeah. The Closer. Like, oh my god. The title track is great. I also love uh, Live from the Kitchen Table. Yeah, and, uh, that one's a good one. Run, Run, Run. The very, very good tracks. Very, very, like, so full of personality, I'd say. Yeah. And that's what I can really appreciate about McKinley Dixon's work. Because I've mm -hmm. listened to, like, a little bit of his other stuff. Yeah, because he's, like, semi-new, right? Because he doesn't yeah. have that many, like, listeners on Spotify. Yeah. That's what makes it cool, though. Yeah. So I hope he gets bigger. Because we'll be there. We will be. We could say we were there first. You exactly. know what I mean? It's great. <laughs> that's the only reason why we like him. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's new. He's up and coming. Exactly. He's going to be a star, he's that fresh. kid. 
Uh, uh, but uh, should we keep going? Sounds good. Uh, now, my number eight, I'm sure is probably not on your list, but it was an album that really surprised me mm -hmm. because I had never really listened to their work that much before, but it intrigued me because their producer is an artist I love very, very much. Yeah. It is Did You Know That There's a Tunnel Under Ocean Boulevard by Lana Del Rey. Yes, uh, I've heard you sing your high praise about this album. I've tried getting into Lana Del Rey before, but it's just not for me. And I completely understand. It's it's mostly the instrumentals for me. Yeah. I really like how, um, in terms of like her, her uh, music's tone, mm -hmm. she's really trying to sort of like... I don't even know how to describe it. It sounds very like lush, but in like an old way. Yeah, like, like kind of retro. Yeah, kind of like retro mm -hmm. feel to it. Yeah. And I, I really like all just like the reverbed out vocals that she has in a lot of the songs. Yeah. Especially the one song she has with Father John Misty. I, I don't remember the title right now. I think it's called Margaret. Okay. But um, yeah, I was honestly really, really surprised by how much I enjoyed the, the record. Was that your first like Lana album? I've listened to bits and pieces of her stuff like here and there. Mm -hmm. Never like something like that yeah, like, from that start extent. to finish. But uh, I, yeah, I, I guess it would be. I don't know why I didn't just answer <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, no. I think that was the first one I listened to in full. Gotcha. That's what I'm trying to say. Tight. And I assume you'll, you'll explore further? Yeah, why not? Nice. She seems cool. Yeah, uh, I definitely, I have friends that really like her. Um, but I'm not one of them. <laughs> Uh, number eight for me is an album we covered on the show, and that is 3D Country by Geese. Mm, okay. Uh, this album fucking rips uh, from start to finish. It's just high octane energy, that country twang with a little bit of glam rock energy. Uh, fuck, I forget the, the vocalist's name, but I, I love his voice. Yeah, he's insane. And the drummer, the drums, of course, are Basin. on all the tracks. The drummer's name is Basin. Basin. But then, uh, I forget the... Oh, Basin. <laughs> Basin. Yeah. <laughs> bussin, more like. <laughs> True. Those drums do be bussin. <laughs> Uh, this album was just a lot of fun, like one of like the best rock albums I heard all year. And I'm really glad you brought it on the show because I was very, very surprised and I'm, I quite enjoyed it. Absolutely, man. That album is so great. Um, I really like the album that you brought on that episode. Oh, yeah. But I've been still. listening to Keep It Like a Secret a lot. Nice, nice. So, yeah. So we I should probably do a top 10 albums we've covered, too. That'd be a cool thing. I feel like you already kind of did, though. It's okay, though. <laughs> we can get your opinions. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because everybody's been dying to know mine. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, I, I guess my favorite tracks from uh, 3D Country 20, 21 22 Cowboy Nudes, the title track, and Crusades were my favorites. And honestly, well, everything from that album is very, very good. So check it out if you haven't. Also, check out our episode where we talked about it more in depth. It's quite good. Yes, yes. So, Matt, what is your word? Number seven. Now, number seven is another recent addition because I've been like really getting into him. Mm -hmm. Uh, it's the album Maps by Billy Woods and Kenny Sagel. Yeah, Siegel. This one was good. Yeah. Uh, it, re it released on May 5th, 2023. And yeah, honestly, I've just been like really, really vibing with it. He is, this, he's really good at like, at bars. Mm -hmm. Like his lyricism is just so unique. And his, his usage of studio imagery, I think is very fascinating. Like I forget what track it is, but there's this whole sequence where he has like a flight that he's on. Yeah. And he's that's right. It's so fascinating. And mm -hmm. I just I'm like, wow. I like how atmospheric this oddly is. Yeah. Also, I just love like I like rappers with really deep voices. Gotcha. Something about it is like I'm like, huh. This feels more <laughs> firm. I don't know how else to describe it. I like a firm rapper. A firm rapper, like a Tootsie Roll. <laughs> I was trying to think of like the stickiest candy I could think of. Oh, dots. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I fucking dots. hate dots. I don't think I've ever had dots actually. But um, yeah, no, Maps was something that surprised me because, uh, like I said before, I'm trying to get more into rap, and I, I like it. Yeah, I like it. Uh, this was one that I listened to like when it first came out, and I, I liked it, but I wasn't too huge on it. I think I definitely need to re-listen because I only gave it the the one chance. But I've heard like high praises about it everywhere. This is not on the list, but I highly recommend Arm and Hammer if you have not listened to that collab because okay. it's Billy Woods and someone else I forget, but. Their newest project, the We Sell um, yes. Diabetic Test Strips or whatever. I, I heard that album was fantastic. It's I, quite, from what I've listened to so far, I've been thoroughly impressed. I have it in like my Spotify search uh, to, to listen to later, but I just never got around to it. Some tracks I really, really like off of this record before uh, we move on is uh, Soundcheck, Kenwood Speakers, and I really like Rapper Weed. Nice. That one keeps coming on and I'm like, yeah, this fucks. <laughs> I fuck with it. I fuck with it. All right. Uh, for number seven, this one is 
<laughs> kind of a guilty pleasure of mine. I don't know how, how I'll be judged in uh, the abyss that is the YouTube comments, but uh, we got The Rise and Fall of a Midwest Princess by Chapel Roan, hmm. released September 22nd, 2023. Uh, so I was intrigued by this album because usually when I try to listen to new albums, I go on albumoftheyear.com and I just kind of like look at what intrigues me. And this one kind of popped out of me just from like the album cover and the ratings. And I was blown away by how much I like this album. It's a very bratty pop album. Nice. Uh, with like some really interesting genre bend stuff. Like the track Hot To Go is like this 80s inspired track with like a Devo synth line and like Cindy Lauper cheerleader backup vocals. Wild. It sounds cool. It's so good though. Like her like per her personality is like so infectious and she's also really funny too. <laughs> <laughs> so like it's just enjoyable from front to back I think it's a little flawed like the back half isn't as strong as the first half but like the run of tracks of like the opener to super graphic ultra modern girl is so fucking good and there's so many bangers on there like red wine supernova is like a contender for my song of the year uh, after midnight is a great disco track hot to go as I mentioned is a lot of fun um and my kink is karma is a really cool like synth wave track which I wouldn't expect from a pop album, but it, it honestly, like props to Chapel Room. She's been sitting on this album for like years, so I'm very excited to see what she does in the future. That's tight. Yeah. I, I'm going to have to give this one a listen. I'd highly recommend. It's a lot of fun. I'll also by the same producer that did Olivia Rod Rodrigo stuff. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Cool. I'm going to have to give this one a listen. It sounds very, very intriguing, yeah, especially from your description. Shall we go to number six? That sounds good to me. Uh, number six for me was actually 3D Country. Ah, very nice. Yeah, uh, I very much, in comparison to the other ones I have on the list, um, I think I've gotten just so much enjoyment out of this album over the summer. When did you say? June 23rd? Uh... I think, did you say it? I, I did say it, June 23rd. Oh, good, yeah. good. I wrote down the right date this time. Let's fucking go. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, uh, th this album just has so many fucking amazing tracks, like mm -hmm. AJ said. Uh, I, he already kind of mentioned all the good parts about like the record. Yeah. So I can say that some of my favorite tracks are I, I See Myself, 21, yeah. 22. Mm -hmm. It's another great one. Undoer for me. Yeah. And then uh, Gravity Blues. That's right. That one just, oh my God. Some of them like invoke some of the, like, the weirdest emotion out of you. And mm -hmm. I can't really explain why. Yeah, it's it's interesting because like there there's a, like a lot of sense of emotion on some of these tracks that you wouldn't really expect given no. the sound, but um they, they do they do take you places, which is very cool. Which I think also fits the theme and like the concept of the album very well. Just getting high and going in the desert, exactly as a cowboy. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, that's my number six. Very nice. Uh, number six. I think this is an album you would really like. This is a Struggler by Genesis Owusu. I've heard the name. Yeah, this was released August 18th. It is a post-punk R&B album. Mm -hmm. um, this, I don't know if this is like how accurate this is, but this album re really reminds me of Gorillaz in certain okay. places. I like the sound of this already. He has like a similar flow to Damon Albarn, especially during like the later Gorillaz era, era like Humans Onward. Um, but like beautiful arrangements of like like funk, um, it's R&B. There's some awesome synths in there. Um, and it's just kind of talking about the struggles of life. Uh, some highlights for me are See You There, which is this beautifully fucking smooth guitar riff just about like, I think his partner who he's gonna see in hell because he fucking hates them. Uh, the Roach is great. Tied Up is awesome. I was listening to that on the way in. And that's like Life of Swamp are also great tracks. Also, all the guitar work on this album is fucking phenomenal. And he, he's also a very uh, captivating personality, I would say. So I'm excited to check out more of his stuff as well. I'm definitely going to have to check out their stuff. Yeah, I think uh, you'd quite enjoy it. Especially you said it was post-punk? Yeah. Nice. Mm -hmm. Okay. Hell yeah. Very interesting. Very interesting indeed. Uh, but you know what else is interesting, Matt? Number five? Yeah, because we're on the, our top five albums of the year, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, so number five. I'm not sure if I've ever really talked about this one with you, because usually I'm like, oh my god, AJ, you got to check out this album. Like, <laughs> whenever I discover anything that I remotely like a little bit, I'm always like, you got to check it out. Yeah, Matt FaceTimes me with like the camera directly pressing against his nose, and yeah. he's just like huffing and puffing. And then when I take it away, like the grease of my forehead actually just stays in the camera, so exactly. I have a nice haze. An <laughs> it's a nice haze that he can see me through. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so my number five is actually by um, the Zamrock band Witch. It is Zango. I heard about this album. I got to check that out. I am quite a fan of all of the instrumentals on here. Mm -hmm. uh, apologies on the names if I get them wrong, but some of the ones that I love are By the Time You Realize, the opening track, 
I love Avalanche of Love, mm -hmm. and I'm quite a fan of uh, uh, Apologies if I mess this up. It's track number five. Un I, I don't know if I could do it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let me you try. have to figure it out for yourself, family heads. Unimvesha Shuga. Oh. It's very good. Yeah, I, um, I heard a lot of good things about this one. Stop the Rot is another one that I think I, I'm really starting to like too. Nice. But uh, it's cool. And I, I found out that the acronym for which, mm -hmm. it, it's an acronym. Okay. And it stands for We Intend to Cause Havoc. That's How tight. How fucking tight is that, that? That fucking riffs. But like, it's, it's like a funk album, right? It's like funk. There's some like Latin beats in there too. Oh, yeah. It's like, it's really good. Hell yeah. So it's really spacious. And I, I feel like you can just sort of like, be sent to another place with this record. It's Very full nice. of upbeat and like really like sensational tracks and instrumentation. Probably one of the best like in terms of percussion. Probably one of my favorites. Nice. Of like of all time. I'll definitely have to check that out then because I know Fantano gave it like an honorable mention, but uh, I'll definitely I'll have to check it out for myself. Uh, kind of similar to how AJ uses album of the year. I don't like to listen that much to at least to um, Anthony Fantano's like yeah like um, full on reviews like reviews. But if there's like an album that he's reviewing, I always like to listen to it first, ah, write down my own stuff, smart, and then compare my notes to his notes and be like, huh, that's an interesting take, Mister <laughs> Melon, Fantan, Mister Melon. Uh, most of the time, like I. I Highly disagree with Fantano. He does have some pretty poopy takes, like Twisted Fantasy. <laughs> but I, oh really? Yeah, he gave it like a six. Oh, huh, interesting. But um, hey, he's been doing this a lot longer than we have, so he's That's obviously true. doing something right. That's a good <laughs> fucking point. So good on you, good uh, on you, my man. Speaking of disagreeing with Fantano, my top five album is an album that he doesn't quite care for, and that is The Worm by HMLTD. Oh, I've heard of this one. I heard it's actually pretty good. In my opinion, it was very good. Released April 7th, 2023. This is just an AJ Core album. <laughs> it is a prog rock concept album about a worm, which is a metaphor for depression that devours England. <laughs> Lovely. It fucking rules. We love devouring England. A true. Fucking eat the English. Listen, they're selling England by the pound. We got to eat it sometime. <laughs> That's, Peter Gabriel said so, dude. And you can't say no to Peter Gabriel. You can't. Or else you get Phil Collins. Uh, anyway, <laughs> this album is a lot of fun. The instrumentation, since it's a prog album, was of course phenomenal. There's some amazing strings and fiddles on uh, the track. Uh, the end is now, which I fucking love. The drum work all across this album is great. Same with the guitar work. The concept is very interesting uh, from like a story standpoint, where like everyone knows this like pandemic of this worm is coming towards England and is going to eat them whole. So it's like just kind of taking up defenses and like taking down the worm, but also understanding the worm and why it's doing it. And it, it's like a metaphor. It's very interesting. Uh, and I've, I've never heard like a concept done like that before. Uh, and I have, since I'm like a fucking weirdo, I know I, I, I like worms. <laughs> this album really kind of gravitated towards me. Uh, some track highlights for me are Wormlands. As I said, the end is now saddest worm ever. And the title track of the worm. <laughs> Oh, They're all a lot of fun. You know what I just realized, AJ? What's that? Tom's going to try to listen to all these and then give his opinions of all of them. That's a good point. But Tom does hate listening to albums. Like at the like at the end of like all of his other episodes, he's just going to be like, oh, I listened to your So here's top. my ranking. And I'll be like, oh. <laughs> okay. No, I'm kidding. Um, we we value all opinions, even, even his. Yeah, that's true. But I very much want to give that one a try. I think yeah, you'd be interested to hear. It's I'm, very cool. I'm very intrigued for modern prog albums. Yeah, modern prog is really cool. Um, I'd say like a good starting point is um the Raven that refused to sing by Stephen Wilson. Mm -hmm. That's like 2017, and that's like already in like the upper echelons, like the classics. That one nice. is fantastic. Nice, nice. I'd also recommend Hellfire by Black Midi. That okay. came out last year. That was my album of the year last year. Phenomenal instrumentation. I think you'd quite like that one. Nice. Okay. Okay. But enough about fucking prog rock. What is this? Episode five of the family album. <laughs> <laughs> now what's your number four? Uh, my number four. I had a lot of trouble placing this one. Uh, oh, by the way, Zango came out June 2nd. Tight. 2023. I forgot to mention. <laughs> nice. Um, this was a record that I had a lot of trouble placing because um, it just was so good from start to finish. Mm -hmm. uh, the cover honestly intrigued me so much that I was like, oh man, I really got to check this out. I discovered it through the needle drop because yeah. he had like posted a video about it. I saw the thumbnail. I was like, okay, write it down. <laughs> and then uh, <laughs> I decided to give it a try. And that is Urapaya by oh, George Clanton. Fuck yeah, that, that's in my top 20. Let me tell you, man. Um, I was blown away by some of the instrumentation 
on this record. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just so like, it's somehow so dreamy, yet so like hard hitting at the same time. Yeah, man. The intro fucking, uh, every, I got everything that I want or everything I, is it everything I want? Something like that. Uh, give me a second family guys. <laughs> <laughs> but I agree every track has so much punch even though it's like a very chill like laid back kind of like, almost a like vaporwave uh, yeah. album it's hazy but it's so solid and so grounded at the same time yeah and I love just like the quirky vocal production where you can like barely hear yeah, his man. vocals it's very shoegazy because like the thing is the instrumentation is like the sort of like 90s hip-hop-esque sort of like I don't even know how to describe it. Like it's, I I I'd say vaporwave is like a pr pretty good way to put it. Like it, it's very ambient and very dreamlike, uh, and with some like hip hop trap elements in there as well. It is everything I want, by the way. Oh, but uh, like nice. the title, the, not the title track, but the beginning yeah. track. Uh, but there's like so many amazing tracks on this record. Everything I want, justify your life, yeah. punching down. My God, so good. Uh, a personal favorite that is on multiple playlists of mine it's called you hold the key and i found it and then uh we also got f-u-m-l Urapaya, and then for you i will just from, from start to finish there's some there's some in the middle that i definitely like don't love as much as others mm -hmm. but from start to finish i was just like wow this is such a vibe yeah it's a great experience quite enjoyed this one uh, number four for me uh, came out the same day as the worm april 7th 2023 and that is rats saw god by wednesday hmm Really awesome shoegazy alt rock album with kind of like a country twinge. Sorry, country twin. What the fuck is a twinge? I don't know. <laughs> I hope it's not offensive. I'm so sorry if that was. Uh, anyway, this was a uh, former guest fatter day. Uh, one of his favorite albums of the year. I quite like this one a lot. This album just fucking rips from start to finish. It's just some awesome hard hitting guitar work. That's about just growing up in like the South and like how shitty it is. Uh, it's like a really cool coming of age story with some really awesome hard hitting instrumentals. Some track highlights for me are Bull Believer, Chosen to Deserve, Bath County, and Got Shocked. There's a lot of, if, if you're in like a rock rut, I'd recommend checking this out. This is a cool uh, intro to like shoegaze stuff, which I think we'll also see next week as well for my album pick. Good to know. Good to know. Um, yeah, I've heard of Wednesday, mm -hmm. and uh, I I don't think I've heard of this record, so. Well, I hope you enjoy, man. It's uh, a lot. I highly recommend. A lot of fun. Good to know. Good to know. But AJ, I believe we're at the top three. Yeah, we are, man. Our bronze through gold. How do you feel? Like um, nothing. <laughs> you know what? That's fair. That's fair. No, I'm excited. I, uh, <laughs> as the greats say. As it came out in July 28th uh, that I forgot to mention yet again. But um, shall we just jump into number three Sounds through good. one? Yeah. Now, I did actually review this one on Family Vacation. There you go. It is uh, Kara Jackson's Why Does the Earth Give Us People to Love, released on April 14th of this past year. Very nice. I was really like, there are so many things to say about this record. Like the instrumentation of her blending like folk, like really, really dark folk with like, I don't even know, like such sardonic and like bitter mm -hmm. lyricism, but like it's bitter in a way where it's like just observant. Yeah. It's very like sort of passive and observant in like a way, but it's so like scathing mm -hmm. the way she describes people such as like uh, in songs like the dickhead blues. <laughs> And Rat and yeah. uh, Dickhead Blues is a great name. <laughs> it's a fucking fantastic name. So much punch. Like, it's so, it's such a sensational album and oddly, like, a bright album for, like, the themes that it covers. Yeah. Like, no fun slash party or no fun or party. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't like to just say slash. It feels, <laughs> feels very just on the nose. <laughs> but uh, tracks like that, which have, like, two or three act structures and then, like, pawn shop and then like freaking uh even recognize mm -hmm. which is like this weird sort of like poem like okay track i i in the way that she delivers it mm -hmm. and it's only like a few seconds it's like or no it's like a minute it's okay. like a minute or something yeah, like that yeah. but uh it's, it's good so i I, did, I quite enjoyed your review for family vacation uh, i thought that was very well done but i did not listen to the album no, it's fine i didn't mean to it is still also my spotify search history but it's been in there like for fucking ever and i just haven't got around to it it's a journey it's yeah. definitely a journey but she definitely takes you on it very very well cool uh i pretty much I, i'd say in terms of the tracks that like i love 
It's all of them except like the last two because okay. I feel like it does kind of like like peter out a little <laughs> bit, but that's because the last two. Tri- <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, you can't escape that bit. <laughs> no, I know, I know, it's Peter. Um, only because like the last few, two tracks are like one's like 50 seconds, the other one's like a minute. Gotcha. So the other ones just really fill up the space more, but it's oh, good. Understandable. I'll definitely check it out. I've heard nothing but great things about it. As for me, my number three is an album I pretty much got to see like in its entirety live, and that is Everything is Alive by Slow Dive. Oh, nice. Released September 1st, 2023. Uh, I saw saw them live with uh, also a guest of the show, Evan. That was a lot of fun. Really awesome, vibey concert that I just kind of like, we're just really took in. It was an awesome experience. Though my back hurt like a fucking bitch the next day for some reason. <laughs> uh, but this album is also really fucking cool. Again, shoegaze, dream pop. Very vibey instrumentals that you can just kind of like let like what just wash over you and let them take you away. Uh, so some incredible guitar work and just awesome atmospheric instrumentals. I think some track highlights for me are the opener Shanty, Kisses, uh, A Life, and Change to a Cloud. I very much enjoyed this album. I was very impressed because I hadn't heard Slow Dive beforehand, but I, I wanted to get some studying done and they happened to release an album this year. So it was, it was a perfect storm of what I like in music. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's good. Um, yeah, I've heard that they have amazing live shows, mm-hmm. like just quite sensational. Their lead vocalist, I heard, is just like crazy. Yeah, like crazy good, not like insane. <laughs> no, they they were great. I I really fucking love seeing that concert. That was just all, like one to kind of just like turn my brain off and just be in the experience, and I loved it. Nice. But Matt, we're on our top two albums. So so what do we got? Well, I think uh, I'd be remiss if you didn't see this coming, mm-hmm. but. Uh, <laughs> My number two is actually Scaring the Hose by JPEG Mafia and Danny Brown. Yeah. Uh, released March 24th of this past year. This, I can't like articulate what this record makes me feel because like <laughs> it's interesting. Like his, their lyrics, they're, they're obviously like spitting bars. Yes, like absolutely totally. from start to finish. But just like the wild production choices on this record, mm-hmm. like it was just so like so vibrant in my mind mm-hmm. especially for like tracks like perfect and yeah, stuff man. like that oh, it's beautiful fucking crazy like, they're, like, they're uh, doing so much shit like outside the box you would never expect them to just like make this sample with like a, a commercial from just like japan and like but it and gar- garbage pail kids but it sounds so fucking good it does yeah. and like not only that too it's um oh shit what was i gonna say it's gone i forgot i forgot what i was gonna I'm sorry, say man. damn um, fuck. I forgot. I just instantly Damn, forgot what I'm I was going to say. Matt. No, Shit. it's not your fault. Um, I definitely think that this record, though, like, I very much listen to it more for the production aspect than, like, the lyrics, yeah, I think. I would agree. Um, but it is very fun, like, seeing. Oh, now I remember what I was going to say. It's very fun seeing, like, all the different choices they have, especially for, like, the rhythms in some yeah. of them mm-hmm. like you get some pretty interesting like like meters yeah, yeah. and I, I can appreciate that for sure yeah especially for like um like kingdom hearts key and mm-hmm. then uh what is it uh, uh it's not it's not god loves you it's like the second to last track uh is it heaven on earth heaven on earth that one yeah that one's great yeah. and then like orange juice jones like god loves you is also a fucking banger i it's love that sample good. And even just the title track, Scaring yeah. the Hose. I listen to that Perfectly song. Perfectly encapsulates the album. The whole fucking yeah. album. And then Danny Brown just like really just going, going at off. it. Like Danny Brown is just like fucking around. And then like Peggy is just absolutely screaming. Yes, and just fucking start start killing finish. everything he just fucking drops. What the fuck you think? It's not nothing. <laughs> well, technically. <laughs> <laughs> Eat that ass like cannabis. <laughs> uh, amazing. Like. It's funny, it ha- like it has humor, it's funny, it's very like action packed and mm-hmm. it's just it's just an overall good time. Yeah, man. And I'm very happy that like I've been really kind of um I've been exploring a bit more of JPEG Mafia's like stuff. Yeah, tight. Especially like his solo stuff. Mm-hmm. Cause he has like another thing. <laughs> and also more JPEG Mafia. It's pretty it's fun. Th- really fucking enjoyed this album, as you will see in a couple couple minutes. You'll definitely <laughs> <laughs> You'll definitely uh, see a lot of similar production choices. Bet. Uh, like, um, because what was it? Devin Hendrix and uh, Joe Chill World is an album that he put out, and mm-hmm. I have been kind of vibing with that one too. Nice. So, very cool. Same with uh, the Ghost Pop Tape. 
Okay. Good. It's a fun one. It's a fun one. I'll have to check them out. Very cool. Uh, number two for me is one that I covered on Family Vacation, uh, the first one that we ever did, uh, that which is That Feels Good by Jesse Ware, released April 28th, 2023. A phenomenal disco album, which is one of my favorite genres. Her voice is just spectacular, and every in, every like instrumental is just beautifully arranged, creating some really awesome like dance hooks and just very just lush ambient instrumentals. Uh, I love Pearls. Uh, the title track, Freak Me Now, um, Free Yourself. There's just so many great tracks on this album that I, I loved seeing. I was nev- didn't even expect there would be like a full-on disco revival album in 2023, but I was so happy I found it. Because I also explored more of Jessie Ware's stuff, and she's fantastic. And I'm excited to continue that journey. I haven't listened to the album in full yet, mm-hmm. but one of their songs did come on in a store I was in. Oh, nice. And I was like, wow, I see what AJ means by this. Yeah, dude, it's so groovy, man. There's so many awesome bass lines. I love all the horns in there. And just like the energy is just so fun. It's just a, a great time. Well, AJ, um, hate to break it to you, but we're at the final final one. Oh, no. It's okay. We'll be back next week, silly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> Every fucking day. <laughs> nah, nah. Um, this, I, I gotta say, I knew this was gonna be my number one, like, instantly. Mm-hmm. Like, this record, for me, has had such a chokehold on me in, like, a weird way. And it's, it's funny you say that, because your number one is also Take Me Back to Eden by Sleep Token, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Vore by Sleep Token was probably my favorite track of the year. Uh, <laughs> really encapsulates who I am as a person. Exactly. You know? <laughs> Inside and out. Oh, my God. <laughs> Very, well played, well played. I tried, I tried. Um... So my number one <laughs> was a record uh, that came out on June 27th, 2023. It's one I've talked about to pretty much everybody I know. It is the group therapy record. I was mature for my age, but I was still a child. Mm. This record is just so interesting because it's labeled to, for a lot of people. They label it as like a rap album yeah. and like hip hop, but it really just like genre bends like you wouldn't uh, expect. Mm-hmm whatsoever i mean track number one is like a little bit of like an audio clip that they pulled from somewhere Mm -hmm. but then like the real like technical like Like starter track american psycho that is like the fucking uh it's one of the coolest openers i think i've ever heard uh group therapy by the way is uh comprised of three members it's jada grace tj online and swim okay those are the three artists uh two of them were actually child stars Oh, wow. Yeah. One of them, oh, I so believe, sorry. was, was uh, Leo on Lab Rats. <laughs> and then the other oh, one. Damn. And, the, and then Sw- that's TJ online. And then Swim played, uh, I think, a guy named Troy on Bella and the Bulldogs. I don't know that. And that, I think it was a Nickelodeon show. And then um, Jada Grace was all, had her own show. Like, like she was the main character of her show. And I just don't remember what the, what it was called. It premiered like a, a while ago. Well, yeah, group therapy is definitely going to be needed for child stars. Oh, for <laughs> so, sure. Yeah. But like, it's interesting. Like there are some aggressive points on the album where they're being like, yeah, what the fuck is up? But then mm-hmm. the, like other times it's very vulnerable. Like it's so funny having an intro like American Psycho, but then getting uh, to tracks like number nine's club song. Mm-hmm. And then also like trunkpoppers.com, which is another one that's very fascinating. Yeah. Uh, but then like you get sensational ones like Hot and like Lightspeed and even um, Smiles. Smiles is a very fun juxtaposition because it's a really upbeat like track, mm-hmm. but it's talking about how much they fucking hate smiling all the time. <laughs> yeah. And having to keep like the smiles on and like. Relatable. Yeah. yeah, no, it's. And I think like this record really fits their name. Gosh, yeah. Because it's like you can tell that they're very much healing through the art that they make. Mm-hmm. And I think from that alone, that's what really made me love this album. It's also got some pretty fucking banger lines. Nice. And I was really just surprised with the instrumentation. Like it's not all just like straight rap. A lot of it's like has a it has a really musical quality to it. Hell yeah. So I've been I urge anybody to take a listen to this album. I did give it a try like when you first sent it to me. I only got like a couple of tracks in because I, I got sidetracked. I didn't really like what I heard, but I didn't give it the full listen. So I think I'll have to revisit it. I think it's I, I one thing I also would very much like to say, a huge I'm finding that a lot of people on the older side are not liking as much as people on the younger side. Okay. 
So that is true. We are a couple years older, which makes all the difference. And you for know? some reason, I love it a lot. <laughs> 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 but um, no, I I very much like it. I think it's um, I think it's very fun and a very creative way that they are kind of expressing themselves mm-hmm. and just talking about like you know socializing and shit and how it yeah. sucks. Fucking amen. <laughs> But that's my number one. I oh, listen yeah. to this album a lot. Nice. Well, I'm happy for you, man. That's awesome. Uh, as for me, my number one is Matt's number two. That is Scaring the Hose by J.K. Mafia and Danny Brown. We did a full episode on it if you want our, our detailed thoughts. But this album is fucking immaculate. One of the first albums that I listened to this year where I was really like, okay, if music like this is coming out, I want to listen to more that's coming out this year. It, it From the moment I listened to it, it was number one and it never moved. Like, I love this album, like, from start to finish. The samples are so out of the box and creative, but work extremely well, complementing the Peggy and Danny Brown's flows. The lyrics are so funny and full of personality, especially on God Loves You. My God, Danny Brown is a fucking animal on that track. Uh, it's, it's just full of so much personality. It feels so raw and retro, but also so unique. And it's just incredible they were able to strike that balance. Uh, and they also complement each other very well as MCs. It's very, very good album. I think I gave it an A-plus on the, the episode. I'm going to fucking bum it to S-tier. It's so fucking good. It's quite good. No, I mean, I, I knew I had to include it in some capacity. Yeah. And I thought that was going to be number, my number one. But then I realized I just got more enjoyment out of, I think, the group therapy yeah, one. that's totally fine. Objectively, though, scaring the hose, if, like, the other one... If I hadn't listened to the group therapy one... Mm-hmm. uh. Peggy and Danny Brown's record would be at the top. Yeah. Like, that was very, very hard discerning between the two, but I think I got more enjoyment out of the group therapy one. That's totally By, like, a hair. Gotcha. Definitely by, like, a hair. But (laughs) honestly, scaring the hose, and, oh my god, the DLC pack. Yeah, that was great. Have you listened to it? Hermanos? Holy Mm -hmm. shit. That that track is so good. It was very nice. It's so good. I loved it. I loved it all. But, Matt, I believe that brings us to the end of our, uh, our... Top 10 rankings. Do I have any honorable mentions or shall we just end it right here? Uh, I would say, actually, yeah, I only really had one honorable mention. Mm-hmm. It is uh, Yard by Slow Pulp. Yeah, I guess really just indie sleaze okay. kind of kind of record. Cool, cool. But uh, it's it's fascinating. I'm quite fond of the track Mud. And from what I've listened to, it's very palatable. Nice. A lot of uh, angsty girl rock. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> and we love that. I'm quite a fan of that, especially now that I'm getting more and more into like Boy genius. Yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, Angsty Girl Rock, some honorable mentions for me. The Blanche by Blanche did a family vacation on that album. That was a lot of fun. Uh, Born Again by Danger Mouse and Gemini the Gifted. Really awesome rap album that I li- liked a lot. Have you listened to any of Danger Mouse's like production stuff? I don't think I have, no. If you like The Alchemist, I think you'll, you'll dig uh, Danger Mouse. Similar stuff, but I quite enjoy. Uh, Desire When It Turned Into You by Caroline Polachek. That was sitting at number 10 for the longest time, but that dropped a few spots. Uh, Quarantine, Danny Brown's solo album was great, and Cousin by Wilco, a nice little indie all rock album. Quite nice. A lot, lot of good music this year. A lot of good music this year. Yeah, and I'm very glad I was able to kind of just take all of it in, and I'm really glad I got into it. Even even if I did listen to some of some of the Snickers, <laughs> hey. that, that, that's also part of the experience. Hey, listen, as Evan said on the penultimate track of uh, the penultimate episode of uh, season one. Sometimes you got to find the diamonds. You got to dig through some shit to get to them. You know, exactly like Melanie Martinez's album. This like, year. The, like the rotting animals album that we will be releasing through Spotify. No, cut, cut, it, cut it now. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> now we will die. We'll get canceled. We can't uh, do the that. The link in description. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, AJ, this is a fun little fun little family meeting. Yeah, a little different. Uh, I mean, we, we've been doing a lot of countdowns, but I feel like it was kind of cool doing a whole year re- in reflection. We got a lot of uh, very interesting albums we want to cover and some interesting uh, family meeting ideas yeah. over the next few months. So get ready uh, for that. Be on the lookout. Yeah. It's got gonna, a, it's got a be, lot of exciting stuff coming in 2024. It's going to be quite a quite a show. Yes. Quite a show. <laughs> but uh, that will conclude this episode of Family Meeting. As always, I'm Matt Glass. I'm AJ Tanari. And this is the only time I ever do the intro and the outro. We'll see you next week. <laughs> Bye-bye. Peace.